Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of Nine Tomorrows by Isaac Asimov. Dane reads. So this is a short story collection. There are nine stories in it. They're all based on the theme of like his interpretations of tomorrows. As usual, I'll read you the blurb, then we'll go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, Isaac Asimov. Nine tomorrows. Nine uncanny glimpses into the not too distant future of Earth people. Whatever their mood, wryly humorous or grimly realistic, all nine stories reflect Asimov's masterful ability to combine scientific fact with the unpredictable, unscientific actions of mankind. So the stories in this, uh, we have two poems, which not very good. I just make them up, see? and rejection slips. And then the nine stories are Profession, The Feeling of Power, The Dying Night, I'm in Marsport Without Hilda, The Gentle Vultures, All the Troubles of the World, Spell My Name with an S, The Last Question, and The Ugly Little Boy. So we will start with a Profession. Oh, actually, no. We'll start with, I just make them up, see? I guess I'll read you a little bit of it to give you a feel for Asimov's poetry. Oh, Dr. A, oh, Dr. A, there is something, don't go away that I'd like to hear you say, though I'd rather die than try to pry. The fact you'll find is that my mind has evolved the jackpot question for today. I intend no cheap derision, so please answer with decision. All right, well, my uh, battery died there, but that seems like a fun little place to leave that excerpt for you guys. So we're gonna move on to profession. So we get this little line, Armani, he was old. He was at least 30. George thought, will I be like that at 30? Will I be like that in 12 years? I'm 32, geez. And then Dr. Antonelli says, do you believe that studying some subject will bend the brain cells in that direction? Like that other theory that a pregnant woman need only listen to great music persistently to make a composer of her child. Do you believe that? Well, actually the theory is meant to be that it makes the child more intelligent, but also that's been proven to not be true. And then an another great quote from Amani. Come to think of it, you better keep it. Books are meant to be read and reread. This story is basically all about a culture in which um, the jobs that we do are kind of predetermined for us, you know? But somebody discovers that he just likes learning for the sake of learning, and that doesn't work too well in the system. So uh, we're gonna skip the feeling of power, although it was all right, and the dying night. And we're gonna go on to I'm, on, I'm in Marsport without Hilda. This just made me laugh because it sounds very dirty. I said, suppose I don't finger anybody. That would be like fingering the wrong one as far as the service is concerned. I've got to finger someone, but only the right one or my head's handed to me. And this concerns, it's like, this investigation into who's smuggling this drug basically, but the way that the drug uh, interacts with people, it makes them talk in like free verse, word association. It was almost like reading beat poetry. Uh, then we have All the Troubles of the World. And this is basically uh, about a, uh, this is about the, the use of Multivac, which is the computer um, that Asimov uses in his stories. And Multivac's being used to like predict when crimes might happen and stop them. So we get a, uh, he barely skimmed the rest of the report. He estimated that there were at least 2,000 cases of prospective wife beatings listed. Undoubtedly, not all would be stopped in time. Perhaps 30% would be consummated. But the incidents was dropping and consummations were dropping even more quickly. Multivac had added wife beating to its list of predictable crimes only some five years earlier, and the average man was not yet accustomed to the thought that if he planned to wallop his wife, it would be known in advance. As the conviction percolated through society, women would first suffer fewer bruises and then eventually none. Some husband beatings were on the list too, Gulliman noticed. And uh, later on we get this, which is just really interesting because uh, I worked with a client to publish a book called The Future of Healthcare in which this kind of stuff's basically happening and it's happening now in our world. So Gulliman had ordered an analysis made by Multivac naturally of Multivac's capacity to turn its attention to the problem of predicting probabilities of disease incidents. Doctors might soon be alerted to individual patients who might grow diabetic in the course of the next year or suffer an attack of tuberculosis or grow a cancer. An ounce of prevention, and the report was a favourable one. <laughs> and then this story ends with this, which is dark but brilliant. Othman used the instrument on Gulliman's desk. His fingers punched out the question with deft strokes. Multivac, what do you yourself want more than anything else? The moment between question and answer lengthened unbearably, but neither Othman nor Gulliman breathed. And then there was a clicking and a card popped out. It was a small card. On it, in precise letters, was the answer. I want to die. All right, then we have Spell My Name with an S, which is another one of those stories that kind of 
It's all about like um, the, uh, the Cold War basically and like aliens getting involved to save humans. And then we get the last question here. And um, basically humanity's found a way to tap energy from the sun. But somebody says like, oh, it's not over yet. And we get this. Um, then Lupo's eyes snapped open. You're thinking we'll switch to another sun when ours is done, aren't you? I'm not thinking. Sure you are. You're weak on logic. That's the trouble with you. You're like the guy in the story who was caught in a sudden shower and who ran to a grove of trees and got under one. He wasn't worried, you see, because he figured when one tree got wet through, he would just get under another one. I get it, said Adele. Don't shout. When the sun is done, the other stars will be gone too. Darn right they will, muttered Lapov. It all had a beginning in the original cosmic explosion, whatever that was. And it'll all have an end when all the stars run down. Some run down faster than others. Hell, the giants won't last a hundred million years. The sun will last twenty billion years, and maybe the dwarfs will last a hundred billion for all the good they are. But just give us a trillion years and everything will be dark. Entropy has to increase to maximum, that's all. And these are the thoughts that go through my head when I'm anxious and I can't sleep. There's no point to anything because the sun is going to die, so will the universe. Lovely. And let me just get a reference. Someone had told Gerard that the AC at the end of Microvac and Multivac stood for Analog Computer in Ancient English. Very cool. So yeah, all in all, Nine Tomorrows by Isaac Asimov. Some great short stories in this. It's a pretty good introduction to his work. Like, if you see it, definitely pick it up. I would say, like, the robot stories are probably the best ones to start with, but I did enjoy this a lot and would recommend it whether you're new to Asimov or not. So I gave this a 4 out of 5. So there you have it, that's what I made of Nine Tomorrows by Isaac Asimov. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book. If you read it, hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit that subscribe button for more. And I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.